This Week at NASA. Speaking on behalf of President Obama, NASA Administrator Charles Bolden addressed celebrants at the 44th Annual Martin Luther King Jr. Commemorative Service held at Ebenezer Baptist Church in Atlanta. Bolden, who has family ties in Atlanta, says the opportunity was an honor. As I was growing up, although I never met Dr. King in person, my family members uh, in Atlanta who, who knew him in the neighborhood and everything, they always talked about him and what, a, what an inspirational person he was. And, and as I grew up, he meant a lot to me. I, you know, I, I read about him and I listened to him on television and I think I was moved every time I heard him speak. The theme of this year's celebration was Remember, Celebrate, Act, a mission still to fulfill. He's correct at 70 seconds. The next three crew members of the International Space Station talked about their upcoming mission aboard the orbiting laboratory in a news conference from the Johnson Space Center. Really the main reason that we're up there is to conduct science and now that we are at station complete our goal is to get the 35 hours a week of utilization or time working on experiments. So we plan on putting a lot of time into that. That's really the main focus. I'll be up there with Don Pettit, who is just phenomenal. He's a genius and he has a lot of great ideas. So I'm hoping I can piggyback on some of the things that he's doing and bring those back to the students that may be watching. NASA astronaut Joe Acaba and Russian cosmonauts Gennady Padalka and Sergei Revin will continue to train ahead of their scheduled March 29th launch aboard a Soyuz spacecraft from the Baikonur Cosmodrome in Kazakhstan. Akaba, Padalka, and Revin are three of the six crew members comprising Expeditions 31 and 32. Aboard the station, they'll join NASA astronaut Don Pettit, Russian cosmonaut Oleg Kononenko, and European Space Agency astronaut Andrei Kuypers. Goddard Space Flight Center financial manager Matthew Ritzko was recently treated to a White House visit where he was personally congratulated by President Obama as the winner of the 2011 Presidential Securing Americans Value and Efficiency, or SAVE, award. Implementation has already begun of Ritzko's money-saving idea to establish a NASA lending library for sharing specialized tools across the agency. Ritzko says the award was special, but his visit with the president was priceless. For me, making the visit to the White House was very humbling, and it was something I will always carry with me for the rest of my life. I don't think many people have the opportunity to be in that kind of a situation where you're one-on-one -on -one with the president in the Oval Office. I think it's something that's going to be extremely memorable for me and my family for, and a highlight of my career. Exciting new findings about everything from the most remote galaxies in the universe to stars and planets right here in our cosmic neighborhood were announced at the annual meeting of the American Astronomical Society held this year in Austin, Texas. Among the findings, the discovery by NASA's Hubble Space Telescope of the farthest protocluster of galaxies ever seen. The cluster of five tiny galaxies is about 13.1 billion light years away and was seen as it appeared 13 billion years ago. The discovery was made using Hubble's Wide Field Camera 3. These new images were captured by NASA's Dawn spacecraft as it continues to orbit the rocky asteroid Vesta. And collaboration between NASA's Chandra X-ray Observatory and the National Science Foundation-funded Atacama Cosmology Telescope in Chile has yielded the discovery of the largest galaxy cluster seen in the distant universe. Located more than 7 billion light years from Earth, the El Gordo galaxy is hotter, more massive, and produces more X-rays than any other known cluster. This winter gathering of the AAS, often called the Super Bowl of Astronomy, attracts thousands of astrophysicists, educators, students, and journalists from around the world. Another of NASA's Space Shuttle main engines is headed to Stennis Space Center. This SSME is the third of 15 being sent from the Kennedy Space Center to Stennis. The RS-25D engines, which helped power space shuttles to orbit during the 30-year shuttle program, will be stored at Stennis for future use on NASA's new heavy-lift rocket, the Space Launch System. 
the SLS will carry the new Orion spacecraft, cargo, equipment, and science experiments to space, providing a safe, affordable, and sustainable means of reaching asteroids and other destinations in the solar system. With the slides on the screen and how they relate. And so then it's Bill Gerstenmeyer, NASA's Associate Administrator for Human Exploration and Operations, was honored by the American Institute for Aeronautics and Astronautics as the presenter of the Von Karman Lectureship in Astronautics. In his lecture to the AIAA's 50th Aerospace Sciences Meeting in Nashville, Gersten Meyer touted the International Space Station as a global outpost in space, a platform for discovery. The annual Von Karman Lectureship Award, named for astronautics pioneer Theodore Von Karman, is given by the AIAA to an individual who has distinguished themselves technically in the field of astronautics. NASA's James Webb Space Telescope has reached another major milestone in its development. The last six out of 18 total primary mirror segments and the secondary mirror that will fly on the Webb Telescope have passed their final cold test. Completed at the X-ray and cryogenic facility at NASA's Marshall Space Flight Center, a 10-week test series chilled the primary mirror segments to minus 379 degrees Fahrenheit. During two test cycles, telescope engineers took extremely detailed measurements of how the mirror's shape changes as it cools. Cryotesting verifies that the mirror will respond as expected to the extreme temperatures of space. This test campaign has spanned over three and a half years and it has been a tremendous effort for the team to work through all of the difficulties associated with such a long and ambitious schedule. Teleoperated period starts, teams command their robots to score as quickly as they can. The 2012 first robotics season had its national kickoff at Southern New Hampshire University in Manchester. Thomas period as our human players put game pieces into play. First, for inspiration and recognition of science and technology, is a robotics building competition during which teams made up of some 50,000 U.S. high school students and their professional mentors strive to meet a specific design challenge. Teams around the country attended local events to hear what their task is this season. Are you ready for the kickoff? Yeah! For their participation in the 2012 first robotics competition, high school students from Maryland and Virginia met at Walt's Flight Facilities Visitor Center to learn about this year's robot challenge. I think that the game's going to be really fun and challenging this year. I think it's going to push us to a whole new level. It's going to make us think outside the box more. I think it's amazing. I think every year it gets harder and it, it challenges the students more and more and I love that. I love what they come up with. First competition is not only about computers and robots, it's also about learning to work with others in a team environment in the spirit of cooperation. They're all expected to work together and help each other find, find the solutions to problems. To, to work out any problems they might encounter. It doesn't matter if you're playing a game, you know, with them or against them. It's still, you know, you're all hanging out, having a good time, and not really getting mad at each other for anything. Several local teams will build and use robots to compete against other teams from the Mid-Atlantic region, with the winners moving to the Nationals this April in St. Louis. It's high energy here in Cleveland, Ohio. Over 100 high school students received their assignment and picked up their kit of parts, a common set of parts to build a robot in only six weeks in preparation for the upcoming high-tech first robotics competition March 22nd through 24th at the Woolstein Center in Cleveland, Ohio. Really the whole purpose is to get kids at high school level and, and other ages involved and inspired to do science and technology. You don't have to be a rocket scientist or something like that to be in science robotics. Anybody can be in science robotics if you like working hard and trying new things. Don't be intimidated. If you love math and science or if you have any interest in it at all, this isn't an opportunity you should miss and there's nothing else like it out there. Twelve high school student teams from Alabama and Tennessee received materials for building their robots during the first kickoff at Calhoun Community College in Decatur, Alabama. 
Each team was given the same kit that includes motors, batteries, a control system, a small personal computer, and a mix of automation components, but no instructions. The teams were shown the new Rebound Rumble game playing field for which they'll design, build, program, and test their robots, all within six weeks. Their first regional competition will take place in March. I'm very pleased to uh, uh, present to Stennis Space Center this plaque, attesting to the fact that you are indeed one of the very best places to work. Representatives of the Partnership for Public Service visited Southern Mississippi to present director Patrick Shireman with an award citing Stennis Space Center as one of the best places to work in the federal government. A recent survey released by the nonprofit nonpartisan organization once again placed Stennis at number five of the best government facilities to be employed and among NASA's 10 centers, number one. Former NASA astronaut Mae Jemison, the first African-American woman in space, recently led a Hollywood delegation on a visit to the Johnson Space Center. Uh, Actors know, Terrence Howard, yeah, yeah. Nate Parker, and David Oyelowo were accompanied by director Anthony Hemingway, who were in Houston to promote their new movie, Red Tails. This film celebrates the heroic exploits of the Tuskegee Airmen, America's all-black contingent of World War II pilots. The group met several astronauts and toured several of JSC's astronaut training facilities. Oh, we have an image here on mission control. Six years ago, on January 15, 2006, the return capsule from NASA's Stardust spacecraft landed in the Utah desert, completing its 2.9 billion mile round trip journey to collect dust samples from the tail of comet Vilda II. Research done on these particles gathered from the capsule's aerogel collector revealed surprises, including the sample's closer resemblance to a meteorite from an asteroid than that of an ancient comet. Stardust is the first spacecraft to make it back to Earth with cometary dust particles in tow. And that's This Week at NASA. For more on these and other stories, log on to www.nasa.gov.